All right, guys. Hey, we're going to be uh, taking a look at the different macronutrients and how the, uh, the enzymes uh, come into play and, and what they do during the digestive process. Uh, the first one we'll take a look at is the carbohydrate response. Uh, from my resources, click on this link here. It takes you to this, so listen carefully. Digestion of the complex carbohydrate starch involves amylases produced by the salivary glands and pancreas brush border enzymes in the small intestine. Okay, now time out. Uh, the enzymes are oftentimes called amylases, which would fall under a group of enzymes car called carbohydrases, in, if you really want to get that technical. But amylase comes from that word amylose. Amylose is the scientific name or uh, biochemical name for starch. Uh, often found in potatoes and bread and things like that. So again, amylase breaks down amylose. In the mouth, amylase from the salivary glands begins carbohydrate digestion. Salivary amylase breaks starch down into smaller polysaccharides and sugars like maltose. So when did However, the... Only a few start. Excuse me. Uh, when did the digestion of carbohydrates begin? Pay attention to things like that because that's one of the things I want you to be able to do is find is identify when, where, and how these enzymes come into play and what they do. Starch molecules are completely digested into maltose before they enter the small intestine. This is because the acidic pH of the stomach destroys salivary amylase and the enzymatic content of saliva is low. So, if you remember, extremes in pH, temperature, uh, salinity, things like that can destroy enzymes. It can cause them to, to uh, unravel, which we call denature, uh, and therefore they lose their active sites, it's not existing anymore, and they can't continue functioning at that pH level. The pancreas also secretes amylase into the duodenum. In the small. So now we're getting into the role of the pancreas. The pancreas starts getting involved in that first section of the small intestine called the duodenum or duodenum. Uh, you can see the pancreas lies right here, and there's a duct that dumps right into the duodenum. And those pancreatic juices will also contain. Uh, more amylase, uh, pancreatic amylase, and then now we're going to get into this bicarbonate thing. So this, to me, is just an amazing thing that your body naturally does. Uh, so listen to this. Intestine, bicarbonate ions from pancreatic juice neutralize gastric acid. Amylase continues the breakdown of starches into maltose. So again, uh, as soon as that stuff hits the, uh, the, the small intestine, the pancreas dumps in its pancreatic juices, which contain the amylase enzyme, but also has this bicarbonate molecule, which acts like a chemical buffer and brings the pH back to normal. Because if you remember, the amylase cannot function whenever it's at a, it, when it's too acidic. It has to be within a certain very narrow range uh, to maintain its shape and its active site and its ability to recognize these uh, starch molecules and sugar molecules. So again, uh, to me, it's just an amazing uh, example of checks and balances in your body that helps bring th so bring things back to normal. When we get into the protein digestion, you know, it'll explain why the pH had to drop so much. Amylase acts on both glycogen and starches, but not on cellulose, an indigestible plant fiber. Can you tell me why it doesn't act upon that? Enzymes attached to the brush border of small intestinal villi complete the digestion of carbohydrates. Starch is broken down into monosaccharides, disaccharides, and short chains of sugar units called oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides, or oligosaccharides as she calls them, the prefix oligo just means a few. Uh, you hear it in oligopoly, it's a, a company that has a few owners. Uh, more than two, uh, but typically three to four is the max what that prefix is used for. Brush border enzymes 
break down oligosaccharides and disaccharides into monosaccharides, which enter the bloodstream. All right. So these brush border enzymes that are located and attached to the surface of the uh, of the villi, which are these finger-like projections here, uh, they will, or the brush border, uh, they will actually continue breaking down these oligosaccharides, disaccharides, and they like that into their individual monosaccharide monomer components, glucose, galactose, and fructose. And then from there, they will actually cross over into the bloodstream via protein transport because they are polar and they can't get through that nonpolar region of the cell membrane where those fatty acid tails are. So it has to use a protein bridge to get across. All end products of carbohydrate digestion are absorbed as monosaccharides. Absorption of nutrients ultimately takes place in the capillaries of the villi. Okay, the capillary. A capillary is a very, very small uh, blood vessel, uh, usually very close near to the outermost, uh, sometimes they call it the apical layer of uh, cells. And this is where the, the glucose and fructose and galactose molecules will cross this, this border using uh, facilitated diffusion, using proteins to get across in here into this cell, which then they are transported out the other side and cross into this blood capillary where they can be shuttled uh, to different parts of the body. All right, and that pretty much wraps up carbohydrate, carbohydrate digestion. Things you need to be asking yourself, where does it start? Where does it finish? What enzymes come into play? And uh, what do they do? All right, I hope this was helpful.